Welcome to the Sip and Spin. It is a chilly February 2nd, blessed in bulk or Candlemas or happy Groundhog Day. Like I said earlier on some of my teaser videos, the Farmer's Almanac does a really, really nice job of explaining the history behind today. However you choose to celebrate today, um, it is a time to look forward to spring. Our days are getting longer, the sun is up a little bit more, and hopefully we'll start to see, at least here in the Midwest, <laughs> hopefully we'll start to see those temperatures uh, creep up above that negative, negative mark. Um, it's been pretty bitterly cold here these last few days. So what I'm going to do today, and I'm going to do this in probably a lot of different cuts because I have a lot of different products. I am going to fumble my way through using a bunch of different blending tools. What I did was open a bag, it was a premium blend from Napa Valley Fiber. And the really cool thing with Napa Valley Fiber, which I've talked a little bit about before, is that not only do you get a braid that has the colors of whatever it is, but you also get a beautifully blended bat. So what I'm going to try and do is recreate this using four different styles of blending tools. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because there are a lot of separate videos out there on YouTube and they're great videos. I am by no means an expert. Like I said, I am going to fumble my way through this because quite honestly, I don't use this stuff very often. I have it. I've played with it. I'm just not very good at it. And when you add in the martini, well, let's just see what today holds. Um, in my glass is a blackberry lemon martini. Basically, it's so, so easy to prepare. Three parts pink lemonade, two parts blackberry brandy, one part Hendrix gin or the gin of your choice topped with a really good quality ginger beer. And then I made meringue snowdrops to put on top. These cookies remind me of my grandmother who I love dearly and she always used to make these in the spring for me. So for me, these little snowdrops are all about spring. So let's get blending. So the first thing I did was weigh the bat that came with the kit. Again, this is no drama llama from Napa Valley Fiber. And then all of the little bits and pieces that came in the kit, I separated them into four separate piles and I totally lucked out. They all weigh roughly five eighths of an ounce. So I am working with samples that are all the same size same weight and that's really important when you're blending especially when doing kind of an experiment like this so I have four piles that are all equal weight now one of the things that came in this kit was uh, Gotland curls and I didn't realize how soft Gotland could be again I think that it's one of those things where different breeds uh, can surprise you well, I didn't want to work with the locks. I wanted them to be blended out. So I grabbed my cards and went ahead and opened up the locks to make them a little bit more easy to work with on the different tools that I'm going to be using to blend. So I just charged the hand card as you do and opened up the locks. Now it would have been just as easy to open these up with a flick carter but this is one of those times where having a larger paddle size I was able to in just a couple passes open up these locks and get them ready to actually blend a little bit more smoothly. Now if I was going to do lock spinning or something like that I would have just left them and I didn't even think about it. That would have been a fifth way that I could have blended all of these but the five-eighths of an ounce I think was the perfect size or the perfect uh, weight for all of the different tools that I chose to use today.
the wax are opened up and nice and fluffy and look a lot like the other ones. Quite a difference from what I originally started with. Okay, so I'm going to start with faux logs, or I, I guess these would be called fake roll logs. And if you look uh, just a little bit to the left, you can see my blending board. And hand cards use the same fabric as blending boards most of the time. And the blending board that I have is one that my dad made for me. And it's a very similar process. So it's kind of one of those things where do you need a blending board or can you basically do the same thing if you have hand cards and that's one of the things that I was experimenting with today to see do you really need a blending board to create a rollog and so what I did was I grabbed the exact same tools for both so you'll see the knitting needles and the paintbrush which I really didn't need to press the fiber down into the teeth and I layered onto the hand card in exactly the same way that I would layer fiber onto the blending board. So I created that and then I went ahead and started blending. Now the first one that I did, which you can see just to the right of my martini, I really, really blended that. And so for the second one, I wanted some of the variations and some of the stripes left in because you can see in the bat that came with the kit, there's some pretty pronounced different uh, colors. There's some pronounced white and teal and gray. So I didn't want to over blend this. So I just did a couple passes with the hand cards and then I went ahead and rolled it off. And I know there's a way that you can do this just doing the cards or just using your fingers. And I actually didn't like the way that turned out. It turned out really fat. So I went back to using a pair of knitting needles and creating just a little bit more. It's more like what you would get if you were using a blending board. So hand cards are like mini blending boards. And there is a baby roulette or foulade. And as you can see, the really fat one, that's the one that I didn't use the knitting needles on. I like the knitting needles a lot better. And so as you can see, blending board and hand cards. Uh, the blending board is just a bigger workspace, but the process is still the same. I'm going to layer on the different fibers and then use a couple of dowels to stretch and uh, blend them a little bit more as I pull them off.
So with the hand cards, I ended up with uh, in the five eighths. Remember, it's all all of these are the the exact same weight, five eighths of an ounce. The blending board, I believe, is a twelve by twelve inch square, and I got one. It's pretty good size. I probably could have done two. I got one Rolag off of this. Uh, it was five eighths. Whereas with the hand cards, I ended up with uh, quite a few more. So I guess that would be something to consider as well. If you want to be working with one Rolag or if you want uh, the smaller ones, I think it'll be interesting to see what the yarn looks like between the two different samples.
the show rag off the blending board. And again, comparing it to the bat that came with the kit. The next way to blend is combed top. And so um, you can use a hackle, which is a, like a really long version of one of these. These are my St. Blaise combs. I don't have a hackle, so I went ahead and just used my combs. The process is the same. You're going to layer the fiber onto the comb and then either hand pull it or use a diz to take it off the comb. The first one that I did I used the Diz and I liked it so much more. The second one that I did, I just pulled it by hand and I felt like it was way too loose. So I really learned that the Diz is a nice tool to have when you're pulling combed top off of a set of combs or I, I imagine off of a drum carter as well.
The only downside to poems is you have this bit at the end, and that's largely due to my fault. I, I shouldn't have left so much behind the comb, and so what I did was I just pulled off the extra and I re-blended it. So I did have some that was a little bit more blended. None of it went to waste, but that is the downside with a comb. You do always end up with that little bit, and I don't believe you have that with a hackle. And so this is the combed top. The right is what I hand pulled, the left is what I used, uh, that I used the diz for. And as you can see, the diz portion is definitely a little bit more consistent. And then the last is the drum carter. And the drum carter that I'm using is a Louette Junior, and it's a very old one. The carding cloth is starting to pull off the sides, so I'm actually pretty impressed with what I was able to get with this. One of the things that I noticed, or one of the things that I've learned with drum carding is the handle should always spin smoothly and freely. If you have to tug or pull, then you've got way too much fiber or you need to open the fiber up more. The way to get a really good carded bat is to make sure that you have a very smooth, very consistent uh, turn as you're as you're blending and so what I did I just slowly fed all of the bits of fiber onto the larger drum Now, for the Gotland locks, I had some that I opened up, and I was curious to see what would happen to, for if I didn't. So some of them are opened up. The first pass that I do is with locks that I opened up on the hand cards, and then the second pass is with the raw locks. a little bit more challenging feeding them into the drum carter. You can see it starts to stick just a little bit.
then I noticed that a lot of the teal had stuck to the smaller drum and so I just opened it up and blended it back on top and I'm really glad I did because that added some of that teal back in that I felt like was missing on some of the other blends that I made today. And there it is. So the drum carded bat that came with the kit and then the one that I made. Not too bad. So there you have it everyone. Um, blended